This week, I am gonna show you how to set up the DSer correctly inside of Adobe Audition. Hey guys, great to see you again. Thank you for coming back for more Talking Tech and Audio with me, David, here on the channel. And if you've already subscribed, that's great. If not, now is as good a time as any to go down there. Hit the subscribe, turn on the notifications, and also drop me a like. It really helps me in the channel out to bring you more of these videos every week. So the DSer inside of Adobe Audition, it's native to Audition, and it's often used in an effect rack, but I found that people just seem to just put it in there without knowing how to set it up correctly. So I thought on this video, I would show you how to set up a DSer correctly inside of Audition. And what does a DSer do? Well, exactly that. It gets rid of those really harsh sibilant sounds on the S's and C's in dialogue. Now, everybody's voice is different and clearly men's and women's voices are very different. Women, just because of their pitch and tone, do carry more sibilant. So if you have a guest on your show or if you are a female podcast host, you probably will need to pay a bit more attention to this, but it affects everybody's voice and the environment that you're recording in will affect it. The microphone that you're using certainly will affect it. So learning how to use a DSA correctly is really important. It's uh, not that hard to do once you know the basic steps. So I think now's as good a time as any that we jump into Audition and take a look at how to set up this DSA. So here we are once again back inside of Adobe Audition. And this week, as you know, we're looking at how to get rid of those horrible, harsh sibilant sounds in your sentence, just like those, in fact. So I recorded a short sentence, which we're going to just drag into Adobe Audition now. Uh, take a listen to it. Let's see if we can spot some sibilants in this sentence and DS it using the DS. As you can hear, it's horrible. Very sharp sibilant sounds in there. So the first thing you need to do, your best friend, the uh, first route of attack to get rid of these sibilant sounds, is to open up the spectral frequency. I don't know if you use it that much, but it's a heat map, basically, of your audio. And colour is what you're looking for. So these orange marks here, yellow orange marks, that is sibilance in there. If you use the marquee tool, which you do by making sure that is selected and just highlight this, you'll hear sibilance. And much the same here. Horrible sibilant sounds, all of them, and again there. So what we're gonna do, now we know that is our sibilant sound, we are going to open up frequency analysis. If you haven't got that open on your particular screen, then you need to go to window, look for frequency analysis, and it pops up. We are going to play that on a loop and it's gonna give us a print. There you go, you can see the sibilance there. So if you press hold, you can stop it now, just click off the audio. So now we've got a clear idea of where the sibilance is, the peak of the sibilance. Now when you hover the mouse over these frequency analysis peaks, it will give you a reading, as you can just see beneath me there, where it says cursor. It's telling you the height and the hertz of your audio. So by hovering over, one of these peaks here on our sibilance, we can see that our center frequency is 7,359 hertz on my voice, on my microphone, 7359. So with that information, we can now begin to open up the DS and begin working on the DS itself. So to do that, you go into effects, amplitude and compression, and there you will find the DSer. 7359 was where we want it to be. That has set our center frequency and we can alter the bandwidth. I rather keep the bandwidth fairly narrow so we're only attacking the sibilant sound. So if we just highlight that bit of sibilance there, and this is basically like a compressor for your S's. Think of it like that on the gain reduction. If we start looping that round, what I'll begin doing is dragging this on and we'll see the gain meter coming through. Now, the trick is, that's the first stage of doing it, just to begin tacking the sibilance. But then you need to play the full sentence back because what you want to do is only attack the sibilance and not the rest of the consonants in the sentence because otherwise it begins to make all of the audio sound a little bit too muddy. So let's just begin bringing the uh, gain reduction meter up on our sibilant sounds. There we go, it's kicking in there. Now if we start playing the sentence back in full and what we're looking to do is to see the gain reduction meter coming on just on the sibilant sounds but checking itself off as it's on the rest of the sentence. Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence and DS it using the DS. So that's clearly not quite aggressive enough because it wasn't really coming on on the sibilance. So let's just move it up to around about 20, let's go up to about 30. Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence and DS it using the DSer. A little bit too aggressive. It was certainly hitting the DSing, but it was also staying on when it was coming off of the DSer. So I reckon, as with anything in Audition, you can just click in the box and free type, which I will do. 
Minus 25 looks like it could be a pretty sweet spot to me. And you can obviously see we are capturing the de-essing here in this graph window. Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence and de-ess it using the de-esser. Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence. And if I was being really pedantic, I might go for minus 26, but we are virtually there now. Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence go. and de-ess it using the de-esser. Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence and de-ess it using the de-esser. That is absolutely perfect. You can see it was coming on with the sibilant sounds and there was nothing showing on the game induction meter when we were off it. And if I just play it with and without, you'll hear the difference. Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence and de-ess it using the de-esser. Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence and de-ess it. Ooh, sounds so sharp without it, doesn't it? Let's see if we can spot some sibilance in this sentence and de-ess it using the de-esser. So there you go, that is how you set up a de-esser accurately in Adobe Audition. First of all, don't forget, you need to shift D, open up your spectral frequency. It is your best friend and look for these sibilant areas. Once you've got one of those highlighted with the marquee tool, open up your frequency analysis window, highlight the peaks, find out what is your frequency you're looking to attack. Then you open the de-esser, put that number in as your central frequency, keep the bandwidth fairly narrow, and then begin tickling around with the game reduction meter so you're only watching it tickle on with the sibilant sounds and not with the rest of the sentence. And then you know that you've got your DS set up correctly within Adobe Audition. So there you go. You have now learned how to set up a DS inside of Adobe Audition. It's simple, isn't it? And it will help your audio so much. Don't forget the steps are super simple. First of all, open up spectral frequency. Look for where the sibilance is. Once you've got that, open up the frequency analysis. And then you can pinpoint the exact frequency that you need to put into your deesser, put that frequency in as the center bandwidth. And then after that, you just begin playing with the output gain and you will effectively and correctly reduce the amount of sibilance inside of your audio productions and your podcasts. And your audio will sound as good as that of a pro, which is what we're trying to do here on the channel each and every week. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop me a like, turn on notifications and also subscribe. And if you've got a few spare moments, maybe you'd like to watch a video that I put up recently about my switch over to the brand new Bayer DT700 Pro X range of headphones, and they are amazing. But uh, with that, it's time for me to say goodbye, and I'll see you on the next one.